It's a little hard to find, but there is a theme that is running through all three readings today, and it's the theme of faith. We know that faith, along with the other hinge virtues of hope and love, is at the very heart and essential to the Christian life. But it is one aspect of our spiritual lives about which we may at times feel a bit insecure. Do we have enough faith? Is it strong enough? Will it endure whatever is in store for us? We might take some comfort then from the fact that the original disciples who had the privilege of knowing Jesus personally, of witnessing his miracles, and hearing his very words, were no more secure in their faith at times than we are in our own. If they had been more certain, then they would not have been asking Jesus to give them an increase in faith. What is faith? It's a gift from God. And it is one that if we ask for it, we are assured that we will indeed receive it. Yet faith is not something that you need to store up in large quantities because Jesus assures us that a little bit of faith is as good as a lot of it because genuine faith no greater in volume than the tiny mustard seed is sufficient to uproot trees and move mountains. Our first reading, which though written thousands of years ago, sounds like it could have been written this very day, especially by a resident of Damascus or Aleppo, because the author complains of the violence and fear that are a part of daily life, of the ruin that is evident all around. Certainly the evil and injustice that exists in this world, especially when it totally disrupts people's lives, is one of the greatest challenges to faith. We know this to be true, for although our lives are relatively calm compared with those of others who live in the troubled spots of this world, still evil and injustice at times intrude upon our own lives in various forms as well, through such things as illness or natural disaster, personal misfortune, and the like. Indeed, any occurrence or circumstance that might cause us to be asking, why me, or how is this fair, has the potential to derail our faith and trust in the existence of an all-powerful, just, and benevolent God. How then are we to persevere in faith, maybe even grow in it? First, we must like the disciples, not ever hesitate to ask Jesus that we be given sufficient faith. But once given what we need then, we might also listen carefully to the advice of St. Paul to Timothy in our second reading, where he tells Timothy to take care, to stir into flame the gift that's been given him, that is to guard this rich trust of faith and love with the help of the Holy Spirit. Like the coal in the fireplace, faith is a gift that must be tended to or else it runs the risk of burning out. Although not material in nature at all, it is in some sense like a most valuable treasure. It's something that has to be guarded and protected so that no one and nothing is ever able to take it from us. So the message is that faith must be always handled with great care, tended to with great attention, lest it grow cold or disappear altogether. Many of us know the truth of that danger because we have seen it happen to others. 
not infrequently to the young who have their fledgling faith easily taken from them by the influences, distractions, and attractions of the world, or others who give up on their faith completely after a long siege of trouble in their lives. And sadder still, there are those who lose their faith through apathy and neglect. The message then is to remember that faith is ever a precious and fragile gift and to take care of it with the help that is available to us, available to us through the Holy Spirit. Isn't it the Holy Spirit who prompted us to make the effort to come here this morning in order that our faith might be nourished by word and sacrament? Isn't it the Holy Spirit who urges us to pray in order that our faith will be strengthened? So today, as we join those original disciples in the presence of Jesus, might our request then be exactly the same. Increase our faith and let us be confident that this is one prayer that will never go unanswered.